Today's Trove News is going to take a look at Nigeria. Now, we're going to do this in two parts. We're going to look at the uh, frontier basins in part two. But initially, we're going to look at Nigeria's declining production. And really, that's centred on the Niger Delta. It's worth stating up front that we will be covering the production history, have a look at the Niger Delta, the geology, and we'll look at frontier basins, stratigraphy, what's been in the media and future plans. What we won't be covering, you can see there, lots of concerns and issues. For now, we're staying focused on the technical aspects of Nigeria. So here's a graph showing Africa's oil production from 1965 right up to 2022. It comes from the BP Statistical Review of World Energy. And you can see here the big hitters in Africa, Nigeria, Algeria, Angola in more recent times, and Libya. Now we've done a video on Angola, and today we're going to have a look at Nigeria. We can see on the graph that in the past, Libya has produced lots of oil and then it's gone through leaner periods, produced lots more oil and then very, very erratic through time. And, and this is mainly due to some of the uh, ongoing troubles in the country that haven't yet been resolved. Nigeria, on the other hand, has been little change since the early 90s. But since around about 2010, uh, we can see that it's gone into a period of a sort of steady decline here. We'll look at that in some more detail on the next slide. So this graph covers Nigeria's production. If we lay overlay some of the major events that we can see in here, we can see a rapid increase in the late 60s uh, into 1970, then a sharp uh, decline, there was an economic slump, a gradual increase over time through the 1990s into around about 2010, but since then, there's been really uh, rather an alarming slide here. Almost a million barrels a day has been lost within the last uh, 10, 13 years. So Nigeria has been the largest oil producer in Africa since the 1970s, but Angola is nip and tuck at the minute, almost overtaking, but it too is declining. Oil accounts for 98% of Nigeria's export earnings. So where did it all start? Well, exploration started in the country in around about 1903, but there were no commercial discoveries made for over 50 years. Olibiri, discovered by Shell Darcy in 1956, was the first oil discovery. Now, Shell Darcy, Darcy was the precursor of, of, of BP. And the well TD'd here at uh, 3,658 metres. Now, Production from the field started back in 1958 from the Agbada Formation. It produced a sour, heavy oil, 21 API. It uh, only produced some 20 million barrels of oil and was uh, ceased production back in 1978, with a recovery factor of around about 50%. Now here is uh, what the Niger Delta looks like today. It's the main focus of uh, exploration and production in Nigeria. It's a tertiary basin. It's predominantly extension, but... There is distally and way offshore, there is some thrusting and some compressional tectonics we'll take a look at. And uh, really it features everything from onshore swamps all the way out to ultra deep water. We do tend to see some of these fields uh, line up, but I think what's very interesting is some of these fields actually seem to be offset. There are areas where there aren't any fields, where I'm pointing now through here. There don't appear to be uh, any fields. There seems to be almost a discontinuity, and some of these trends seem to be uh, offset. Now, that's probably because there's different slumps as we go around, but there's also perhaps an influence of some of the transform faults that come on shore from the oceanic crust. Now, if we look at the structural character, we see bands of extensional and thrust faulting which explain the field trends. So you can see here, here are the uh, extensional faults, really kind of a big gravity slide as all this sediment loads up. It kind of slips out offshore. And then some of these features, they run for quite some distance offshore, apparently quiescent sort of horizontal bedding. And then we see these tow thrusts appearing quite some distance from the shore. There's a scale bar there, 100 kilometers. So you can see it's quite a distance away. This is what it looks like in cross section as we come here from uh, A prime here in the north to A in the south. So this is the line of the section here. We can see here's all these extensional faults. 
And then we get these very, very large rotated fault blocks here, major sort of slumping into the basin. And then this goes on for a while. And in regions like this, it looks like very little is happening. But actual fact, what we see is we see all of these tow thrusts and compressional features as we go hundreds of kilometers offshore. It's a really uh, amazing geology. So let's take a look at the uh, petroleum system. Now for the Niger Delta, it's really quite simple. We've got here the uh, Akata formation. It's generally a, a shale rich formation and uh, there are some source rocks within this sequence. It gets up to huge thicknesses. Then we have the uh, Agbada formation, which is the, uh, the main reservoir and has some internal seals in there. You can see a number of them are named in here, which actually form the traps for the hydrocarbon accumulations. It's a transgressive uh, system, and um, we've got lots and lots of uh, deltaic sandstones within here. And then finally, we have the Benin formation up here. Now, generally, this has minor contribution to the petroleum system, other than it's kind of forcing the burial of some of these units here. It's the shallowest formation and consists mainly of freshwater, continental sands and gravels. Now, faults are what provide the uh, migration pathways up through these uh, systems. And we get both structural and stratigraphic traps, as we'll see. So here is typical features that we'd see in the Niger Delta, the traps. We see these major growth faults here. Sometimes there can be just one or sometimes there can be swarms of them. We get antithetic faults and we get sort of collapsed crests. They can get very, very complicated, as you can see. But what we end up with is we end up with fault closures, with stratigraphic traps, with sand pinch outs, some rollover structures here. We get some clay filled channels, which actually set up strat traps and various other features. But these are typically what we find throughout the delta. Now, looking at this, it's kind of an interesting chart because we look at the timing of the events that are going on through the tertiary here. So we're seeing the source rocks here or anything in the Akata formation. And uh, they're deposited right up to pretty much the present day. Reservoir rocks, likewise, you can see that they're the Agbada formation. And, and they're anything in age from sort of late Eocene right up to present day. The seal, again, similar overburden rock, trap formation. And then we get the generation, migration, and accumulation. And because we have such great thicknesses, this is happening over all of this time frame. And today, there's generation ongoing in the basin because it's still loading and still depositing. So if we look at the delta progression, you can see here back in the upper Eocene times, it was you know, to progress to here by Oligocene through Miocene. It was up to this point, and then it really kind of built out up until the Miocene, Pliocene, the Pleistocene. And since then, sea rises that have happened really since the last ice age has actually moved the coastline inland of these buildups. That's the coastline regression since the last ice age. So just to look at Trove for Nigeria in 15 seconds, we have reviews of stratigraphy. We have all of the assets and fields and discoveries of Nigeria. We have details on every single asset, and we've got all sorts of information on the oil properties, the reservoir properties, etc. Get in touch. So if we look at Exxon's, well, it was really Mobil's exit from Nigeria, which is kind of ongoing. Of course, the company is now known as Exxon Mobil, and they've been looking to exit uh, shallow water Nigeria and uh, have kind of done a deal with Seplad Energy. The sale was blocked by the government, but uh, negotiations are ongoing. Uh, it's of the order of $1.28 billion, 445 million barrels of oil equivalent, 2p reserves, of which 92% is uh, you know, oil and condensate. And you can see here are all the fields highlighted in these uh, numerous licenses and blocks. So as well as the oil, there's some 2.9 trillion cubic feet net of contingent resources. That's of a, a total of uh, 7 TCF, 7 trillion cubic feet of gas, gross sense. And production currently about 95,000 barrels of oil equivalent per day. Now, ExxonMobil began Nigerian operations back in the 1950s, and uh, they were really pivotal in the creation of the Nigerian oil industry. 
there's other interests and they're listed here. So pause the video to have a look. If we also look at another recent event, and it's Total Energy's discovery at Natokan 1AX. It was announced 13th of June, 2023. It's located in the OML 102, just here as shown, not far away from the Offon field, or the Offon platform complex, which is shown in the picture above. It's all in shallow water. It's operated by Total Energies, but NNPC has a 60% interest. Now, the Discovery Well uh, found 38 metres of net oil pay and 50 metres of net gas pay. It was sidetracked, and uh, the sidetrack actually proved up even greater thickness of oil so with uh, 73 metres of net oil pay. Good quality uh, reservoirs been reported, and the well tested at 5,000 barrels of oil per day probably constrained by the facility and it was a 40 api oil it's only a 20 kilometer tie back to the existing uh, off on field in part two we're going to look at the other basins the frontier basins we're going to look at the joint development zone and also the onshore basins which are drawing a lot of attention so in summary the niger delta has been a hugely prospective basin and it continues to deliver significant volumes Remember to subscribe to our channel to be informed when our next video comes out. Give us a thumbs up if you like the video and please ring the bell. Thanks very much for watching. Do get in touch. There's the email address at the bottom.